following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We have the appropriate uh, uh, images that you need to watch while you receive the lecture because uh, it's related with many topics. The title of uh, today's uh, lecture is The Five Causes of Illness and is related to the curse and transformation of energy and also uh, in relation with what we already said in the four previous lectures. So if you didn't hear the four previous lectures, it is necessary that after you listen to this lecture, you do it because uh, the different things, uh, different words and meanings that we are saying, we are very sad. In order to comprehend and understand uh, uh, what we said and the causes of illness, it is necessary to comprehend and understand what the Glorian is. In Hinduism, mainly in Theosophy, you hear about the Trimurti of Adman Burimanas. And uh, here, of course, when we talk about the Glorian, we have to understand that this is above this Trimurti. The Glorian, as you uh, inquire in Kabbalah, is related uh, to that word that we call glory, Hod, the astral light. Because in reality, <coughs> the Glorian is a pure light, spiritual light. Glorian is uh, also called the Ray of Okidanok. The master, uh, Madame Blavatsky, tell us in his uh, secret doctrine, in her secret doctrine, that uh, Okidanok, the Glorian, is a ray of the absolute, profoundly unknowable to itself. And this is something that we have to comprehend in order to understand why the universe exists. Why do exist? Or do we exist? The Glorian is an emanation of the Ein Sof, 
and enters into the universe in order to discover itself. If you imagine the Glorian, we will say that in, that in the last synthesis, each one of us has his own particular Glorian. There is as many Glorians in the universe as many human beings, animals, plants. Everyone has his own particular Glorian. This Glorian has always within itself three aspects wisdom and willpower or as we said in Christianity Father, Son and Holy Spirit or as we will say in Kabbalah Keter, Chokmah and Bina three aspects of the same ray is what we said the cosmic Christ. So within this uh, Glorian exist infinite possibilities but that are in latent and inert way. Inert. He has the power but those infinite possibilities within it do not think. They do know how to use that power. In other words, the ray within each of those possibilities is not or, or cannot use its powers. He has wisdom, but within them they don't know. So the Gloria needs to awake that wisdom within every single possibility within itself. And the Gloria has willpower. But those infinite possibilities within him cannot act. In other words, his willpower is not within them. But all of them are within him, or within it. This is what, what we call the infinite possibilities. That's why we said that the Glorian is profoundly unknowable. It's like, for instance, if you imagine yourself when you are a kid, you have the, uh, the possibilities to become a doctor. But in order to be a doctor, you have to go first to the, pre, uh, to the school, then to the high school, to, then to the college, and finally to the university, in order to develop the possibilities of being a doctor. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with the spirit. And this is how, you, uh, if you see the image, which is uh, placed there in the internet, in the website, which is Shiva, I mean uh, Vishnu. And... Uh, from Vishnu is coming a, a cord, the navel, that extends, and on top of that navel, you find Brahma. And there are three aspects that you see, three aspects of Brahma. So that Brahma, of course, is what we're talking here. Brahma is the ray of Okidanok, the Glorian with those infinite possibilities, but are dormant possibilities. So, when Brahma appears, it needs assistance. It needs a tutor in order for him to learn how to awake those possibilities. And this is how you understand and we comprehend that in the universe, exist the cosmo creators and the cosmo creators are related always with that aspect <clears throat> we we call vishnu which is universal and that's why vishnu is lying down there on a serpent that serpent has 12 heads 
because it's related with a solar system. We know that every solar system has 12 planets, being the sun, Vishnu, the center. So that's why Vishnu is uh, lying down there with 12 serpents. But we have to comprehend and to understand that the 12 serpents work through the law of seven. And the law of seven is the law of the Epta Paraparshinok. So when this Glorian appears in the universe, immediately is assisted by the Cosmo creators, which are symbolized there by Vishnu, the Christ, the manifested Christ. And this is how the Cosmo creator fecundates the Glorian and places within the Glorian the monad. So the monad is that particular innermost <coughs> that is a part of the Cosmo Creator. But it is the same light. Because if we go into the depth of this, we see that it is light fire. So that particle of that Cosmo Creator is placed there in the Glorian in order to teach the Glorian how to develop its infinite possibilities. Because that Cosmo Creators already know. That's why it's a Cosmo Creator. The Cosmo Creator is also a Glorian whose infinite possibilities are already awoken. So that's why he has the power. He has the ability to teach how this uh, Glorian, that's why in Hinduism it is stated that Brahma is sleeping and needs to awake. This is the meaning of it. So this particular innermost is our Father who is in heaven. It's our particular spirit which becomes one with the Glorian. The Glorian takes it. But then when we uh, inquire and investigate our, the last synthesis of our real being, we find that our real being is our Glorian that emanated from the Absolute. But within him is the innermost. And that innermost is the connection with the Cosmo Creator. That's why we say that we have, we will say, a stepfather. But in reality, it's a father who is in heaven. A father who is in heaven is one of those seven Cosmo Creators, which belong to the seven mighty rays. And this Cosmo Creator, through that monad that he placed in the Glorian is going to develop, to help this Glorian to acquire uh, the awakening of all of his wisdom, power, and willpower, or action. This is how that monad, under the control of the Cosmo Creator, sent part of it, or we will say that the monad sent part of it into any planet in order to learn through the law of evolution how to create, how to exercise willpower and how to develop that, that wisdom that there is own particular glory and that who it belongs is already there. So this is how part of that monad that we call uh, the Buddha, the essence, that in Kabbalah is called Neshama, the cosmic soul, or part of Buddha, enters into the law of evolution in order to learn. So 
we said in previous lectures that the metallic kingdom of any planet is a nervous system where the Ruach Elohim is always acting and helping the development of the infinite possibilities of all monads which are evolving from the mineral kingdom to the plant kingdom to the animal kingdom and finally to the level in which we are which is the human kingdom which in reality is the animal intellectual kingdom so these seven cosmo creators of course each one of them have legions of angels other cosmo creators that help in the teaching in the developing of these monads that's why you find legions of the first ray legions of the second ray legions related of course with the 12 cosmo creators which are related with each planet of this solar system because they work only in solar systems this is how they are uh, united and related we talk in, in extents about the, the lamb with seven horns and seven eyes this is how you had to understand that they are one flame but light so then through evolution and through the assistance of that intelligence which is the cosmo creator or the Ruach Elohim the monad is learning and the ray, the Glorian is developing this is what we call the self-realization which is the development of all of those uh, uh, infinite possibilities little by little, bit by bit each one of us has to learn that and here we are in this uh, level in which nature has given us a marvelous physical body which is always the topic of our lectures in order to learn how the physical body and its vital body with nature give us have all of those forces in a latent way and that we had to take advantage of it with the guidance of our own particular inner most which is guided by the cosmo creator and which is working in accordance with the will of our own particular glorian because each glorian has his own will his own wisdom but is developing thanks to the activity of that particular cosmo creator which is our father who is in heaven and beyond this cosmo creator is our glorian which is our particular ray which is individual i repeat in each one of us this is how we are related this is how variety is unity and how you have to understand that we have to comprehend that because it's very important so in a human organism we find that our particular glorian places three atoms spiritual atoms not physical atoms and these atoms are placed in our head when we talk right now from this very moment ahead we had to uh, imagine only the human being, the physical body the microcosmo and we had to understand that the microcosmo is a reflection of the macro so when we said heaven in the macro we always point above but now when we are talking about the microcosmo if we point at heaven 
obviously is the head, the brain. That's our heaven. In a particular individual cosmos, micro, the human being. So there in that heaven, we find that uh, Trimurti or Trinity. The father is placed, or the atom of the father is placed between the eyebrows. It's a magnetic center between the eyebrows. His kingdom is the brain. And he reflects that power in the liver. And then we have the atom of the sun called Chokhmah in the pituitary gland. Whose kingdom is in the heart. There, Chokhmah, the son of God, has another atom which is called the son of man. The atom Nus, or the Nus atom. The Nus atom is the son of man who receives commands from the son of God in the pituitary gland. And in the pineal gland, we have the atom of the Holy Spirit, whose uh, kingdom he controls the cerebral spine down to the sexual organs. Of course, these uh, three atoms are related, as you can see, with the three nervous systems. The cerebrum and spinal nervous system, which is uh, uh, the nerve uh, or the nervous system through which the first force, the father works. The grand sympathetic, which is the nervous system through which the son works. And the parasympathetic. Both uh, or the three systems are one in itself. As we say, the three... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, the Trinity, or the three unity. In Christianity, they said three persons in one God, but in reality, are three forces, positive, negative, and neutral. And this is how the three primary forces express themselves in the physical body. So then, the innermost has to exercise dominion of our physical body, in order to acquire the self-realization. And he has to do it through these nervous systems, through the atomic forces that we have, the intelligences. This is how we understand that uh, that that we call the intelligence is placed in our physical body, because the physical body in the last synthesis is a mixture where all of the forces of the universe are placed. In order for our particular glory and through the innermost to manage all of those forces and to acquire self realization and to acquire independence. Because right now we are not independent. We might think that we have individuality, but that individuality is only a patrimony of the gods, of those that acquire self realization. While we acquire that individuality, we are submitted to the collective system. Our willpower is submitted to the collective system, our wisdom to the collective system. And that's precisely the goal of the Glorian, to be independent, to acquire self-realization and to return into the absolute, knowing himself as an individual and being part of the whole. So when we reach this level in which we are with this complicated physical body, we have the opportunity because we have three brains or three nervous systems and all the necessary elements are in the physical body. That's why we need a healthy physical body, not like a, a, a sick physical body. And that's why we have to study the five causes of illness. 
So these illnesses are not only physical, but psychosomatic traumas, etc., that we have within. So the inner must try to control the physical body by utilizing the atom of the father, who is, or that is, in the middle of the eyebrows, and whose kingdom is in the brain, in order to start his self-realization. But unfortunately, the brain, or fortunately, because it is as it is, the physical brain is the physical vehicle of the mind. When the mind is quiet and relaxed, it's because it is influenced by the spirit. But most of the time, the mind is always in activity. Struggle. Because that brain is connected to the five senses. That brain is connected to all the muscles through which we receive sensations. So the mind is influenced by the exterior world. So it's very difficult for the innermost to acquire self-realization through the mind, through the brain. Because the cerebral the spinal nervous systems control, of course, the whole body in union with the other centers. So you see there the wisdom in relation with that uh, story of uh, Esau and Jacob. Esau is a hunter. It's the mind, symbol of the mind. It's always hunting for titles, for things in this physical world. So the innermost cannot do anything through it. So then the innermost goes into the pineal gland, where we find the atom of the Holy Spirit, which also controls the cerebral uh, aspect of it and all uh, the glands, as we know, to the parasympathetic. But in the lower part, we find the sexual glands, which, as you know, are used in the wrong way. Because the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland is related with that cord that we call Ida. And the father in the eyebrows, in the middle of the eyebrows, is related with that cord that we call Pingala. While the, in the pituitary gland, we have the sun that is related with the Shushumna. So, Ida, which is related with the pineal gland, is related, of course, in the superior part of the brain with those superior emotions, related with the spirit. But in the lower aspect, we have, of course, sexual desire, the desire of multiplying, and unfortunately, through fornication, we have introduced into our system many negative atoms we call the secret enemy the secret enemy really is the ego which was born as you know because of the abuse of the sexual force because the abuse of ida which in christianity is called eve because pingala is called adam adam is related with the brain as we said many times and this is how his kingdom is in the brain. But Eve, Ida, is in the sexual organs, whether a man or a woman. And see, those organs are used in the wrong way, in the animal way. So the innermost cannot exercise control or acquire the initiation through that parasympathetic nervous system as well. Because the innermost has to be initiated into heaven, has to be born again, has to acquire all the possibilities. That's called initiation. Because mechanically, nature takes us to this level, mechanically. Beyond this level, 
nature cannot take us mechanically. We have to, to initiate uh, uh, or to exercise the willpower, the wisdom of our own particular God in order to acquire individuality. So if the two obstacles that you see, the first is the cerebral and spinal nervous system, the parasympathetic, so the innermost has to go into the pituitary gland when, the, when there is the atom of the sun. And the sun is related to his kingdom in the heart, which is the atom nous. This nous atom is the atom or the, uh, related with the heart, which is an organ that is related with the voluntary and involuntary actions or movements of the body. Because when we study the brain, where we find the voluntary movements. Voluntary movement means that you use it with your will. You think about it. You do it. But if you realize that those voluntary movements are on the command of the, of the mind, because the brain is a physical vehicle of the mind. So the mind is the one that is using the voluntary movements, while the involuntary movements, which are like digestive system, circulatory system, and all of that intelligence that function inside of our body is under charge of the Holy Spirit, Bina, in the pineal gland. But the only organ that shares the voluntary and involuntary systems at the same time is the heart. So that's why Logic says here in the superior logic that the innermost can acquire self realization only through the heart. Mm -hmm. Because through the heart that obeys the monad, he can control the other systems. Because the self realization is the control of the three systems. Of course, this is how you enter into the, what you call the Ens Astrale. The first, or the astral entity, which is related with a parasympathetic, uh, uh, excuse me, with a grand sympathetic, related with the heart. But you have to understand that when you are working with the grand sympathetic, you are also working with the parasympathetic, right? Because the innermost, which is called Atman, our own particular monad, commands the human body through the heart. The heart fits the mind. That's why it's called the nous atom in the heart, because that nous is also intellect, mind, but superior. Not the normal intellect that we have here. It's an intellect, a reasoning related with the spirit. And that is, this is how it's fed. The, the, uh, the nous atom feeds with the blood, the brain in which we have the mind. And this is how we acquire solar mind through the activity of the atom nous. The atom nous, the son of man, has to grow up. And as it is written, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, in the same way the son of man has to be lifted up. But that son of man is that atom, that solar force that we have in the heart. So then, the, you find uh, uh, in the book of Revelation, because I want to associate this lecture with uh, Revelation in order for you to understand about this. It says there in the chapter 7 of the book of Revelation, 
And after these initiatic things, I saw four angels standing of the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds, or Ruach Elohim, of the earth, physical body. Of course, these four uh, Ruach Elohim, or winds, are related with the Tadwas. Many times we see it with the elements, but remember that before the elements crystallize in the physical world, they exist in a Latin, a potent way in the fourth dimension as tadwas, vibrations of the ether. And these four angels or spirits that the book of Revelation talks about are the four breaths of life related with fire, water, earth, and air, which are also related in our own particular physical body, the fire with the sight, the water with that sense of taste, Prithvi with the sense of smell, and Bayou with the sense of touch, because as above, so below. So, after these things, this says, that the wind should not blow on the earth, parasympathetic nervous system, nor on the sea, grand sympathetic nervous system, nor on the cerebral and spinal nervous system, which is the tree. Or any tree. Because the tree of life or the tree of knowledge is related with these systems. And after that it says, and I saw another angel, the fifth, Akasa, which is that substance that in the previous lecture we said is related with a sexual force, with the, with the first sexual matter that we have in the sex, related with the ether and with a sense of ear, hear, hearing. So of course, you associate that with the fifth chakra and with the fifth center of the human machine. And I saw another angel, the fifth, related with Neshama, the Burata, our own particular essence, which is under the guidance of Nus, the Nus atom in the heart, which is, of course, related with the Prana. That word Prana is for Christ. Ascending from the east, the left ventricle of the heart, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. So when you see it says, not the earth, not the sea, not the tree, it's related with the three nervous systems of our own particular philosophical earth, microcosmic earth. We're talking here about initiation. Could be also related with other aspects in a macrocosmic way. The seal of God is directly related with the heart. If you inquire always the seal of God, which is related with the Star of David, which is not a patrimony exclusively as we think from the Jewish religion. You find the Star of David or the six-pointed star in many religions. In Hinduism, you find that star related with the Anahata Chakra. There you place. And of course, this is a phallic symbol. The testicles with the phallus make a triangle and the ovaries with the uterus make another triangle. 
If you unite both triangles, and then you have the Star of David, through which the atom noose has to work with. We have to, to seal our foreheads. And then the book of Revelation says, and I hear the number of the sealed ones, or the ones that were sealed, or the chosen ones. 144,000 that in Kabbalah makes the name Adam. The two zeros are related with the two entities, the woman and the man. Because without the woman and without the man, we cannot make that seal. Because it's a sexual union in order to make the androgynous Adam. Because Adam is not masculine. That word Adam is androgynous. Aleph has the number one. Dalet has the number four. And Mem is 40. Plus the two zeros of men and woman, you make 144,000. So in order to be a sealed one, a chosen one, you have to know how to handle the seal of God. And the atom nous, or the innermost, has to enter into the initiation to the atom nous, and the atom nous has to go down and to transform, to awake his uh, 12 powers. Because in our organism, we have 12 powers. Or oh, as the book of Revelation says, there were 12,000 of each tribe. But as you see there in the graphics that we are placed in the website, each one of the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, are related with one zodiacal sign. Arius, Benjamin, Taurus, Issachar, Gemini, Levi, Cancer, Sabulon, Leo, Judah, Virgo, Aser, Libra, Dan, or sometimes Manassas, Scorpio, Gad, Sagittarius, Joseph, Capricorn, Shimon, Aquarius, Nephthalim, and Pisces, Reuben. All of them are associated with the one uh, different uh, 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 how do you call it? ordeals and things that you had to pass in order to develop them. These are the twelve zodiacal signs, and of course, the twelve, the Arcanum twelve, as you see there in the graphic, is the apostolate. It's called the apostolate. The apostolate or the twelve apostles are related, we will say, with 12 engineers that obey the atom nous. This 12 engineer has to obey the atom nous. And the atom nous obeys an architect atom, which communicates everything to the innermost, our own particular monad. So see how everything works. The architect atom from our own particular innermost is the one that knows everything in relation with our own particular cosmic creation. That is transmitted to the atom nous and only to the atom nous to know what to do with its engineers, which are 12. There are many, but these uh, 12 are the main ones which are related with the 12 apostles. So this is how the command of the innermost enters into the physical body through the blood. So cyclically, the blood receives commands, or the news atom receives commands from the forces of the innermost through the blood. And the atom transmits those informations 
to its engineers, 12 apostles. So those 12 apostles are 12 apostles are 12 powers that we had to develop. Not only in the physical world, but in all the internal worlds. This is how Christ develops. This is why you find that Christ, the atom nous, that is represented because you follow uh, the images. You find after that, that it says that the Glorian is the law and the incognito root of the human being. When the human being obeys the law, the Glorian, he becomes immortal. Death and sickness exist because of the disobedience of the law. So the Glorian commands through the innermost, the innermost commands through the architect atom, the atom nous, or the nous atom. And the nous atom commands the engineers, the 12 apostles, in order to exercise all that we have to do in our physical body and to take advantage and to develop what we have to develop, which is, of course, spiritual forces that we have, we, we have to take advantage of it. What the wires are to the electricity is what the nerves are to the vital fluid. The cerebrospinal nervous system is the throne of the inner must, the spirit. And the grand sympathetic nervous system is the diocese of the astral body of the human being. So through the heart, we say, as the sun sends all the power to all planets and lands, as well the heart sends its spirit through the whole body. So that is why we said that Christ is crucified in the heart. Because the cross, the symbol of the four elements, the four winds, as we explain in different lectures, that those tatuas through the blood to the different systems will finally go into transform into a casa, into the sexual organs. But every single organ has its duty in it. And then to refine, and then when we transmute and we perform our self-realization, the solar man is being created. Then we find uh, the first apostle in this grand sympathetic, which is related with the parasympathetic. Because when we talk about the parasympathetic uh, system, we are directly related with the glands. But the grand sympathetic is the energy that enters into the heart and distributes that atomic intelligence into the, into the glands. This is how we have to see it. So in the pineal gland, we have Peter, really with faith. The opposite of faith, of course, is doubt, skepticism. If Peter is active, then Peter is only active with the sexual hormones. That's why when you read the Bible, you said that when Peter appears, appears together with his brother Andrew. So Peter and his brother Andrew, Andrew works in the suprarenal, called also adrenal glands above the kidneys. That's why the cross of St. Andrew is an X, because it's related to the two kidneys. And is what gives us strength, sexual strength. Peter and Andrew had to work together. Peter from the pineal gland and Andrew from the suprarenal. Comes into my mind in this very moment. That is statement in the book of Revelation. I am the one that searcheth the heart, which the atom nous is, and the reins or the kidneys. 
because the one that knows how its engineers are working is the atom news. And of course, Andrew suffers a lot because above this uh, suprarenal glands or each one of the suprarenal glands is a chakra, has a chakra related with chastity. If those chakras are bloody red, the individual is a fornicator. And of course, Andrew tells the atom news. Mm -mm, he is not transmuting. So the engineer, that apostle, knows very well how we act. Because the strength is in the kidneys. And when you study Taoism, you know the relationship of the kidneys, the suprarenal glands, with the sexual glands. And the relation of the pineal gland with the sexual glands as well. Everything is related there. Comes into my mind, Samson. The strength of Samson is in the kidneys. In the suprarenal. Because it's chaste. And his long hair is showing it because it's the emanation or the effluvia of the pineal gland that grows together. That's why Peter is crucified upside down. Like saying, you had to put your faith, your pineal gland, you had to develop that with the transmutation to descend to the ninth sphere. And then, you have other couple that says uh, James the Elder and his brother John. James the Elder is located in the pit of the, st uh, the stomach, really with the uh, pancreas, which is that gland that uh, helps the digestive system. When talking about James the Elder, comes to my mind what Jesus said. It doesn't hurt what you put inside the stomach, but what comes out of it. Of course, James the Elder is related with that. From here, in this area, according to the book of Revelation, we have the seat of Satan, the very pit of the stomach. Gluttony, anger, hatred, self-esteem, self-importance, pride, all of that is here. All those appetites, animal appetites, in the pit of the stomach. And that's why when you read the epistle, epistle, or the letter of James the Elder in the Bible, it says about how you have to control your tongue what you say, because everything that comes from inside, from that area, is just bad things. It is better if, if we talk with the heart and not with the stomach, not with the liver, as we say sometimes. And of course, his brother John is related with the thymus gland. John is also related with the word. In the beginning was the word. The thymus gland, as you see, is behind the heart. It is why I said that John rested his head on the heart of Jesus. And he is the youngest. The thymus gland really is related in the, uh, with their childhood. It says that the thymus gland deteriorates when you reach puberty. And it doesn't work anymore. It keeps working, of course, if you transmute. Because that thymus gland related with the moon is also related with the mind that we have to place in the atom noose. That mind, which is lunar, if you place it in the heart of noose, and then you are okay. That's John. So always we have to transform our lunar mind into intuitive mind. And that's the work of John. Read the Gospel of John and even his book of Revelation is that. All that mind telling things related with the Lord. 
And if you acquire the control of the thymus gland, we acquire, we acquire immortality. Because there is where we have the atoms of youth. So behold here the relationship of John with James the, uh, James the Elder. But above, uh, after John, we have other two apostles that the Bible talks about and is uh, the apostle he didn't bring it uh, Philip and his brother Bartholomew or Nathaniel is also called Nathaniel. Philip is related with the root of our tongue and with the thyroid gland, thyroid. The thyroid, thyroid, thyroid gland is related with that power of the word, as we said in many lectures. The word in the root of our tongue is power. That's why when you read the first in the Gospels, you find that Philip says, we have found that one which is written in the scriptures. Hmm? Because Philip understands what is written in the scriptures. In other words, if you want to understand the books of the Bible or any book, sacred book, you have to develop the, the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland gives you that power, which is called clarity audience, but it's really related with the clarity of hearing what is written or understanding what is written. And his brother, Bartholomew, is related with the pituitary gland, clairvoyance. That's why Bartholomew says, ah, I, I don't know, I, I don't believe you. He says, come and see. Come and see. Because he is the one that sees. You see? And when he reaches Jesus, the atom news, he says, oh, there is Bartholomew. I saw you when you were under the fig tree. That fig tree symbolizes the parasympathetic nervous system under the pineal gland, which is nourishing the pituitary gland. Because the pineal gland nourishes the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland is like the page of the pineal gland. And then he says, oh, you are, you are Nus, the son of God. Because he sees immediately and knows how Bartholomew is related with it. But you see here, for instance, that they said also that Bartholomew was crucified upside down. And it's because he's related with the head. If they said that Thomas and Matthew also were crucified upside down, I, 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 we will understand that, that because he's related with the head. So Bartholomew is crucified upside down. But before that, they skin him alive. It's not a very pleasant thing, right, to be skin alive and then crucified upside down. But that's the meaning. That's something there that we have to understand. I hear this saying, this person really is skin alive, the neighbor. He's always criticizing the neighbor. He's always talking against this person. And this is why Michelangelo in the 16th chapel, painted Bartholomew with a piece of skin, human skin, hanging from his hand and has his face, the face of Michelangelo. People wonder why Michelangelo painted Bartholomew with his face and what is that hanging stuff? What is the symbol? Of course, that's clairvoyance. Every painter, and especially Michelangelo, was a clairvoyant. 
Those that hurt the neighbor with their clairvoyance are cruel. Cruelty is blindness in next lives. So we had to know how to work Bartholomew with Philip to talk exactly what it is because Philip understand the meaning of symbology and Bartholomew sees that. But if you talk without Philip just because you have a big mouth and you talk about your experiences, you talk about what you've seen in the astral plane and you are accusing everybody. This person is a witch. This person is a black magician. Everybody in this world is a demon. We are evil. But we are always accusing this. Look at that. Like we are saints. And we are skin alive. The neighbor. And that's very common among the Gnostics. We always like to accuse the person. This person is hurting the group because of this, because of that. If a person is really hurting somebody, you have to deal with that person. You don't have to communicate that to everybody. Because that's to skin alive a person. And that's cruelty. And that's like saying this old person is always evil and the rest are holy. All of us are rotten. Nobody is holy here. We have to know and to control and defend our, uh, our groups, of course. But not to accuse that this is a black magician, that this is a witch. Everybody is a witch. Every woman has a witch inside. Every man has a demon inside. So we have to be careful. If we want to accuse something, we have to accuse, as the master says in his books, what is written. If his doctrine is wrong, uh, explain the doctrine. But never say, oh, this person is black, because you are also black. Just point the mistake, because Beelzebub repented, so that person can repent too. The past is the past. Because if we skin a live person and we are cruel, and then we gain karma. But using our own particular Bartholomew, Nathaniel, in the wrong way, Philip has to be always there. And when you, if you ever buy the, uh, the, the book uh, Piste Sophia, you will say how Philip interpret the words of the Lord always. But that there are other two that write, Matthew and Thomas. Matthew and Thomas are related with the two parts of the brain. Thomas is related with the right part of the brain and Matthew with the left. Thomas is related with wisdom and Matthew with willpower. But not selfish willpower. A willpower that you use with intelligence. That's why Matthew is represented and is written about the genealogy of Jesus. You know, his gospel is related with the word of Yasod, the word of intelligence, which is represented by the human being or, or an angel. That's why he says that behind him was always an angel advising him how to write. That's the meaning of the gospel of Matthew. Because the gospel of Matthew is the water. The gospel of Luke is the earth. The Gospel of uh, John is the air, and uh, the, uh, Mark is the fire. These are the four elements, the four Gospels. The fifth is the ether, Samael on the or, which synthesizes everything, explains everything. So Thomas is in relation with intuition. Romans, Thomas is in relation with experiences, directly experiences in the internal worlds. Thomas doesn't believe. People said, uh, uh, even, even the Lord, the same Lord, no, says, resurrected. The Lord has resurrected. They said, mm -hmm. if I don't put my finger inside the wound, I don't believe. I, I have to prove that. That's Thomas in us. There are many believers that accept things yet without proving. Thomas gives all the, the last word. This person said that is, is this, is that okay. Thomas says, I want to see, to believe. 
or to understand or to comprehend. While Matthew is that intelligence that teaches, that writes, is really with the left part of the brain, really with the senses. Matthew is a tax collector. How come a tax collector goes into the apostles of Jesus or the apostles of news? It's because Matthew knows that we have to eat. Matthew knows that we have to have a house. Matthew knows how to live, but wisely, under the command of the Lord. That's why he's following the Lord. In the beginning, Matthew is doing the wrong thing. But when you follow Jesus, Matthew is doing the good thing. So we have to work with Matthew and Thomas together in order to do the right thing uh, with, the, with the gospel or with the knowledge, with the doctrine. Matthew knows that we have to, receive, to resolve an equation, and that equation is the self-realization. But that equation is, is divided in two. The half part of the equation is, I need to eat, I need to live, I need to dress. And the other half is related with the spirit. People resolve always the half of the equation and don't resolve the other half because they are identified. But Matthew knows very well that also we have to do it. We have to divide our life. We know how to live because we need, we need, we need to survive in this jungle. Then we have the other two. Because there is always in two, as I repeat, if you, if you read the Gospels, they always name it in two. Which are the, the next one, too. That you, you are Christians here, I believe. James the Lesser and Judas Tadeus. James the Lesser is related with the appendix. That organ which some doctors and the science says, that is, if you cut it and put it out, it doesn't matter. It's just a piece of meat there, hanging from the intestines. No way. The appendix is the seat of James the Lesser, who is the one that deals with the immune system, that controls that the bacteria that are in the colon in the intestines, don't go into the bloodstream. Those people that cut their appendix, of course, they have a problem with many toxins go. Even having the appendix, many toxins go because there are many uh, indolent atoms in the blood that unfortunately don't work very well and the blood is always uh, uh, purified. The blood in this day and age, you know, AIDS and all of that, is because uh, people do not know how to live. If we eat what we have to eat, if we don't drink alcohol, if we don't eat garbage like McDonald, like Burger King, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, I'm sorry, but we are not making here any propaganda in favor of that food because it's garbage. We have to know how to eat. If you know how to eat properly, then James the Lesser will perform a great work in you. Order. That's the word. Order. There's an order, not only in the physical world, but internally, that James the Lesser do. If there is a disorder in the organism, many diseases enter. That intelligence, that engineer now has to control. That's why it is necessary to clean the intestines. Because elimination is controlled by Judas Tadeus, which is placed in the sacrum. Through the sacrum, Judas Tadeus work in the intestines. And there are a lot of people that eat a lot of garbage in the intestine. There's a lot of stuff that shouldn't be. Colonics are good for those people that put a lot of garbage. And the Master Samael Umveor gives a lot of... Uh, purchase in the occult, occult medicine in order to clean your intestines because you have to help 
If you help your pineal gland with transmutation, if you help others by controlling yourself, you have to help also James the Lesser because he will help you and you also will help Judas Tadeus in order to eliminate. You have to comprehend many things in order to eliminate. The higher levels is how he works. Don't think that the function of discharging the human manure in the toilet is just mechanically. It's an intelligent dance that acts under the control of the atom noose. And we have the last ones. Simon the Salad is called. And Judas Iscariot. Ooh. Judas Iscariot, of course, a great master that came 2,000 years ago, came to represent our own particular Judas Iscariot that we have in the sexual glands. Judas Iscariot controlled the sexual glands, whether the feminine or the masculine. And Simon the, the Zealot is precisely in the medulla oblongata, which is behind the brain. To be you just zealous is to control what enters into the superior worlds. Unfortunately, in our subconsciousness, in consciousness, unconsciousness, infraconsciousness, we have a lot of garbage. Elements, you know, ego, that we created from past lives. And here is where we find that uh, Simon the Zealot is the one that controls the medulla and, to, uh, and try to uh, uh, not to admit to enter into the brain. But memories, but we had so much that now we are infected. Because the medulla oblongata is below the cerebellum. The cerebellum is that organ related with subconsciousness, with experiences that we have out of the body. So all the memories that we have enter into the cerebellum and go into the brain with the activities of Simon the Zealot. And below, we have Judas Iscariot, which unfortunately is the one that betrays the Lord. Well, the sexual glands really are the glands that we have to control. But we need Judas Iscariot. These are intelligence that news needs. That's why Judas Iscariot enters into the 12th, because we need Judas Iscariot. But behold, now how we enter now into the ends venery. Because now you know how we create those uh, astral entities or the ends astrali that poison the physical body. If you study carefully every single apostle, then you will live a, a healthy life. But the main thing here is ends venery. Venery or the entity of Venus. From that work comes venereal or the sexual energy, in other words. So the sexual matter, as you know, is through that that we come into this world. To the sexual energy is how we are placed according to the law of return and reoccurrence into this world. And this is how we inherit the genes of our father, the genes of our mother. And this is how we are having in the physical body those genes to that sexual act in order to know how to control. There are two main sicknesses through which Eng's venery acts. We will place there, which is the karma zaya and kamaduro. Karma zaya is a karma of adultery, in which 
the sexual energy is used without intelligence. Obviously, Karma Zaya and Karma Duro are creations of Judas, Iscariot. That's why during the path of the self-realization, you have a lot of egos, and, and the main enemy is lust. But we have to be patient. Judas has to be hung and killed. But the Lord also has to die. And if you follow the sequence of the 12 apostles, you find how each one of them is uh, having a tragic death. It's related with the path that we are starting here. Kamaduro is a karma of fornication. Let me read for you what we wrote here about Karma Zaya in order for you to understand and to read together about this angst venery. You find there, for instance, the image which is related with the temptations of St. Anthony in which many women are trying to get him. Well, that's a symbol of all of those sexual connections that we made in the past and that we have to erase. But they are related with karma zaya and you have to suffer a lot in order to erase that in your path. It's not easy. Those egos are related with karma zaya, which is unforgivable karma. When you pay that, and you disintegrate the ego. So you have to suffer the consequences in many ways. Most of karma zaya is related with emotional pain. The ego is a mental substance. It takes various forms. These forms constitute conditions. It is transformed with a sexual force. These sexual transformations or modifications are the, are the thought waves, whirlpools, or conditions of the mind. Through adultery, the ego casts psychosomatic bonds. The karmic effect to these conditions, this psychosomatic cause is formed in the mind. This effect will settle and another condition will form when it becomes involved with another mate. Countless conditions arouse and subside in our mind through many lifetimes. These conditions cause psychosomatic restlessness. Why do psychosomatic conditions arise? Because of return and reoccurrence. If we annihilate the egos, all conditions will disappear by themselves. But this kind of karma zaya is only after suffering the consequences, not before, because it is a non-negotiable karma. If we hurt somebody because adultery in past lives, now you have to be hurt. And likewise, and we are submitted to the law of return and reoccurrence, unfortunately. When a sexual psychosomatic condition settles, it leaves a definite psychosomatic sexual impression in the subconscious mind. This is known as psychosomatic or latent sexual impression. Take psychosomatic latent sexual impression creates karma saya or a receptacle for karmic effects. This is called non-negotiable karma. When the ego leaves the physical body, he carries with him this negative karma related with karma zaya, adultery, as well into the mental plane. 
The karma zaya can only be paid by great psychosomatic suffering through initiation. So because of the sexual abuse we have created, as you see the next uh, uh, image, the same Saint Anthony related or around many weird people, which are, of course, his own defects, errors, vices, that exist within the subconsciousness, unconsciousness of everyone. You want to be a saint, as Saint Anthony wanted to be a saint, but unfortunately, those weird entities are always bugging him, as are bugging us all day. So we have to be patient and to keep ahead and to comprehend them in order to eliminate them. And of course, you find another graphic where you find the same Anthony again trying to work with the Lord, but instead of the Lord is a woman crucified. His subconsciousness betray him. And it's because of Kamaduro. That's the last karma that uh, the initiate has to pay because of the abuse of the sex. Kamaduro is a result of conflict between the divine fire of Christ and the flaming desire of the mind, or we will say it of the ego. The poisonous emanation that are generated by the poison of sulfur, which is lust, bring into action on brighter energy, Kamaduro. In other words, the psychosomatic nature of the individual is not in harmony with the divine fire of his Glorian. The divine fire seeks, or the, his Glorian, seeks to reconcile the disparate psychosomatic uh, elements but desire paralyzes the activity of the Glorian, or the Divine Fire, and Kamaduri, Kamaduro occurs. So in order for Glorian to finally settle down into that individual, the individual has to pass through death. Only with death we kill death. And of course, that is what we call... Uh, the type of sicknesses which are originated because of sexual abuse, which are numeral, like AIDS, cancer, is because of sexual abuse. Poverty is also because of sexual abuse. So we have to learn how to transmute. And when we arrive to the level of this, we have to enter into the Engs Nature. which is directly related with the superior part of the physical body, the vital body, the ethereal body, related with Yesod. Here, we find that this vital body is directly related with the spleen. The spleen is that gland that takes the solar light when we are sleeping. So the vital body attracts that solar light through the spleen, and the spleen distributes that solar light through the solar plex into the parasympathetic nervous system. The spleen transforms the white cells into red cells in the blood. So, also the vital body, the ethereal body, is directly related with the asod, the sexual glands. And this, so this is how, only through the sexual glands, is how we can transmute or transform ourselves. Here, in the Engs Nature, comes into my mind, Michael, the Logos of the Sun, which is in relation with the solar plex. That's what is called solar plex. Is Michael the one that is the prana that deposits the energy in the atmosphere, and it's the spleen that takes it and distributes it into our organism. 
You hear the conjuration of the seven that says, in the name of Mikhail, may Yahweh command thee, and dry hands, Havayoth. Havayoth, of course, is a negative aspect of the moon. While Jehovah is a positive aspect of the moon. The moon rules Yesod, rules the ethereal body. And that's why it is stated that Mikhail is a ruler of the Jewish religion. The messenger of Mikhail that was incarnated uh, according to the Bible was El Iao of Elijah, the prophet. That's why it is written that it is necessary that Elijah comes first in order for the Lord to be baptized. Because Mikhail represents the fire, the sulfur. And Elijah, of course, a messenger from Mikhail, were the messengers of the, of the solar logos. Many students in Gnosticism mistake and think that Jesus of Nazareth is the logos of the sun, or the center of our solar system. He represents that, but is not the logos of the sun. Jesus of Nazareth, the master of Veramento, is a Paramartha Satya. A being that enters already in the absolute and knows how to travel to it. And in order to work in this planet Earth, in order to help the monads of this planet Earth, he needs the permission of the logos of this Earth, which is Michael. And that's why it is said that Elias reincarnated in John the Baptist in order to place the Lord into this planet and said, do your work. Because Elias, John the Baptist, is a messenger of Michael. And that's why John the Baptist says, I need to be baptized by you, but you come to me. Hmm? Obviously, everybody needs to be baptized by the fire of uh, Christ. But the atom noose being better and in contact with the monad, with the Glorian, he needs to descend into the ninth sphere in order to be baptized with the waters. And here it comes into my mind the letter Mem, symbol of water in Kabbalah. And Mem is Mary or Miriam, the father of Jesus, Yeshua, which is the phallus, Ye Ye Yod. And also you see, for instance, the husband of Mary is Yosef, or Yosephas, the phallus in the stone. In the last lecture, we were, uh, uh, the last lecture or the speaker, we were talking about the stone in relation with the phallus, Hermes, Yosephas, Io, Yod. So you see now there how the two polarities, you need Mary, the water, in order to be born again in Yesod. And that's why Jesus, or Jesus, Yod, because you write in Hebrew uh, the, name, the name of Jesus with Yod in the beginning, and that is Phallus. The Phallus cannot acquire anything without the vulva. And that's Mary Magdalene. In this day and age, in many ways, in, in, the, in the website, in the internet, in the radio, there is a great scandal about that uh, uh, called the Da Vinci Code, in which this writer says that Mary Magdalene was the wife of Jesus. People that are ignor ignoramuses, they say, no, 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 no. Jesus was single. No. Jesus couldn't be or achieve the level of the Son of God without a woman. Because God is male, female. In the beginning, God created man into his own image. Male, female, he created them into his own image. Because God is both. If you want to, to be a son of God just with a male body, and then you are just half. Those people that think that God is male are half atheists. Because God is male, female. Mary, the raw matter of the great work, Mary is a casa puru. 
that the universe used in order to create. So Magdalene is a word also. Of course, now if you go to the Middle East, you find a city called Magdalene or something similar. But at the time of Jesus, that city didn't exist because the word Magdalene, as you see there, is called from mag, which means priest, priestess. That's the word Magdalene. Dale or del is vale, a word in ancient Celtic. Celtic, Celtic or Celtic, is from uh, the white race. Because Jesus himself was only Jewish from Mary. His father, physically speaking, was Celtic. And of course, his wife also was of the white race. His wife was not a Jewish uh, woman. And that's precisely the, the problem there, you know, at that time. Because Mary, his, that represents the wife of Jesus, was from the land of the white people, Del, Magdalene, a priestess of a white race. She was also having a great initiate. But of course, the tradition at that time, how can you admit, etc., and to spread the knowledge or the secret knowledge of, of Kabbalah to the Gentiles, the white people? And that's precisely the problem that is, is still existing in this day and age. Thinking that Jesus was not married, Jesus ne necessarily needs the genes, the sexual force of nature. Nature, nature, isn't a woman. If a woman wants to self-realize, needs a man, and a man needs to self-realize, needs a woman, and, and woman is more nature than man. That's why the woman takes the body or, or creates a, a baby nine months in, in her womb. And that's why Jesus needed, in order to be baptized in ex nature, a woman. And that woman is represented and is Mary Magdalene, the priestess of the white race. Of course, here you find how Judas enters into action there. Because Judas, related with a sexual glance, betrayed the Lord. Judas, of course, is very jealous because he's a white woman. And that was the big problem at that time because the problem of the initiate is always related with the sex. It's not written in the Bible because that was taken out by the Pharisees. But that's the main thing there. How this man, it is written there in some parts of the Bible. The Pharisees point at Jesus when Mary symbolically is anointing his feet, which is Malkut. In other words, Mary is helping him into his initiation. If this man was a prophet, he will know that this woman is not a Jew, but is a Gentile, is out. He doesn't know anything about our tradition. Of course, accusing Mary or being of the bad life. And the meaning of that is, of course, that any woman in reality has defects, vices. But we need to work with the waters in order to rise. Nus, the atom of the, the Son of Man, needs the assistance of Mary, needs to descend to, to Bethany, the sexual glands, in order to receive the waters of baptism of John the Baptist. And after that, he arises from the waters and appears our Jesus, the Christ. Without that transmutation of sexual waters, it's impossible. Now you understand how many diseases crystallize in the physical body because the vital body fortifies with different ways in order for us to have a healthy body as well. In the vital body, we have the roots of cancer 
AIDS. If we treat the vital body, at least we can help ourselves. Not saying that we are going to kill Kamaduro, because that is, is, is impossible. But at least to heal ourselves in the initiation, in order to pay that Kamaduro in other lives. There are many ways. Now you understand why any prophet, male prophet, impossible to become a prophet without a wife. Jesus is going to be Jesus without Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene and Jesus are one. And this is how also you find in Pisti Sophia. How Mary understands better than the 12 apostles the words of Jesus. Because Mary and Jesus are one. As Adam and Eve are one. Because Eve was taken from Adam. And before Eve taken from Adam was within Adam. And now, of course, Adam being single needs Eve again in order to return to the androgenism. Ens nature. As its basis in the sexual glands and the spleen. You have to know how to sleep, how to rest. You have your own particular John the Baptist too. In that uh, vital body, we have another lady that the Master calls in the book of medicine the, la the lady or the maiden of memories. Because the vital body is related with the tatuas. In synthesis, we say that it, the vital body is related with four ethers. The ether of life related with the sex. The, the chemical ether related with the metabolism of the physical body. And uh, the two superior ethers are the reflected ether and the luminous ether. Those two ethers are related with the maiden of memories. If you want to remember everything that happens in the internal worlds, you have to Ask your innermost to bring into your self the maiden, the maiden of memories, which usually is that part of the being which abides in the ethereal world. That maiden is related, of course, with the feminine aspect and works only in sexual union of husband and wife. This is how we separate the ethers of the vital body and we learn how to be healthy physically and psychologically. So we need that feminine aspect of natura or nature, in other words. So this is, is the third cause of illness. Ens natura, ens nature. And we find now, we enter into the ens spirituale, or the entity of the spirit, which relates with the same force. Because remember that the ethereal world is related with the tatwas. The tatwa tejas is related with the salamanders. The Tadwa Apas is related with the nereids or mermaids of the water. The Tadwa Pritvi is related with the gnomes and pygmies. The Tadwa Vayu is related with the sylphs and sylphids of the earth. There are modifications of the Akasa. There in the graphic of Engs Spirituale, you find Moses, because biblically speaking, he is one of, that represents the power of the spirit. Moses performs marvels, prodigies in front of the Pharaoh. Why? Because he rolls the serpent, as it is written. 
As Moses rode the serpent in the wilderness, likewise, the Son of Man, the new atom, has to be rise. When you do this, what we're explaining here, you develop all the powers of the apostles. You de develop the powers of the prophets. And then you can command nature. Because those elements, salamanders, sylphs, gnomes and pygmies, and ondins and nereids, are related with the four elements. The four winds, as the book of Revelation says. That not only act in the planet, but also in the physical body. And then you can heal and, and cure unto cause what Moses is written in the Bible, cause to the Pharaoh. Which is, of course, a transformation. Because we have to comprehend that in this world exists also the opposite of the fire of Kundalini, the opposite of the serpent of bronze that healed the Israelites in the wilderness. And that opposite is the Kunda buffer organ, which is the tempting serpent of Eden, which the witches and black magicians developed. And anybody, anybody that awakes evil powers because of the Kunda buffer, the tempting serpent of Eden, this person can uh, 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 become a black shaman, as we uh, say in the north. They said, this is a black shaman that is performing black medicine, is what the natives said. Well, medicine is something good, right? But uh, they use black magic or uh, black medicine as black magic. It's written black medicine because the good shaman says, performs good medicine. Of course, you know about Circe. In the book of uh, Homer, the Odyssey. How Circe was transforming with her magic men into pigs, into animals. Obviously, the witchcraft of Circe is within every woman. Every woman has the power to transform men into pigs when they identify with their sexuality. Odysseus is the one that controls and doesn't fornicate, controls Circe. But those people that like to fornicate and commit adultery, they become like pigs, like animals. That's a symbol. Of course, when, we, when you are driven by na, uh, Nahema, the evil aspect, the horror, that is seated on that dragon with seven heads. So there are different sicknesses caused by witchcraft, by sorcery, and only can, uh, can be cured with the same powers, but positive powers developed by Moses. The son of man in the heart can do it. And this is by handling the plants. Because the plants are the healthy physical vehicles of those forces. Remember that the cosmos creators are guiding those monads that are evolving in the mineral kingdom, in the plant kingdom, in the animal kingdom. And the angels command those monads in their evolution. So the angels control legions of monads or elementals, we said, fairies. But the black magicians also, when they awake, they know how to command because those elementals do not know between good and evil. They just obey those powers that are above them. And a black magician, a sorcerer, a witch, can do that and cause harm mentally, physically, psychosomatically to anybody. So that's why the master wrote his book, Occult Medicine and Practical Magic, Igneous Rose, and many other books, in order to teach us how to defend ourselves because witches and sorcerers are numerous at the sand of the beach. There are many. 
And many of them enter into this knowledge and repent. But many of them don't repent and hurt. So you know how to defend yourselves. You know how to cure yourself. Because I repeat, there are many sicknesses that are not karma. That are not because of your bad behavior. But it's because the evil entities. And of course, the last cause is Engsday. The entity of God. Which in this case are the loss of karma. Cause and effect. Of course, our debts are so numerous. Our ego is so great. That if we want to pay what we owe. We need really a lifetime of working. But people that live there commonly, without entering into the initiation, the law of karma, the law of God, is merciful. Because if God wants to collect all the karma of all the people in one life, they will kill everybody. There will be humanity here. That's why they are giving us the option of, through this knowledge, to pay what we owe. And that ends day. God gives us the opportunity to pay through the initiation. But ends day is also accomplished in hell or the infra dimensions. Because every karma has to be paid. Nobody marks the law. If you have a lot of karma to pay, but physically, cancer is a cause of fornication. Tuberculosis is a cause of skepticism, atheism. Leprosy is also the cause of fornication. Cruelty, as we were explaining, when you use your clairvoyance in the wrong way, and you are causing harm, when you are skinned alive, the neighbor, you can become, uh, be born blind. Because if you suffer or you cause a, a cruelty, emotionally cruelty to a person. That's why we would say in this, uh, in this way, when, when we uh, see things before talking, let's comprehend everything. And if it's not concerning our, our life, it's better to shut up. Because if we could harm uh, people, and mainly because we think that we are initiates and because we are doing this, doing that, we can gain a lot of karma. And that's cruelty. Remember, everybody is evil here. And we enter here into this path because we want to change. But those that don't want to change, that don't want to pay their karma through the initiation, well, Ains Day is also performed in the nine infra layers of nature. The infra dimensions called hell or inferno are made for that. In order for you, little by little, pay what you owe. Every hundred years in hell, you pay a debt. When you read the ninth sphere, little by little, in every layer, you are paying a debt. So let me tell you, it's a thousand times better to pay here the karma through initiation that to fall down there into infra dimension to pay. That's very painful. This is how the law teaches you. This is how the essence is learning with pain. The inner most takes that, of course, and learns through pain. But we can do it through initiation. So these are the five causes of illness. If somebody is being born blind, it's because he was cruel in past lives. If somebody is a baby that needs a liver transplant or a kidney transplant or heart transplant, it's because this person was abusing part of his intelligences in past life. It's already the 12 apostles related with the organs. It depends how you use your, the force. And then the, the reaction, the effect is that in a new body. This is what is called karma or Engsday.
you can ask questions in order to to go ahead in this lecture. I hope you understood. Did you understand? Did you understand? Some parts. Some parts. You have to listen to this because it's recorded. You know how to understand that, yeah. Can you explain the relationship between the three souls of Kabbalah, Ruach, Nefesh, and Neshama, and the Twelve Apostles? Well, Neshama, as we said, is that uh, spiritual entity related with our monad, with our innermost. And part of that descends, evolves in the earth. And that's the essence, the Buddha. Now the other, the other souls, uh, Ruach and Nefesh, are related, of course, with the protoplasmatic bodies. Knowledge, uh, experiences of the consciousness related with the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, that unfortunately in this stage in which we are is being used in the wrong way and that we are creating a disharmony. If Nefesh and Ruach, the animal soul and the thinking soul, start obeying Nus, it's because John is placing the head on the heart of Jesus. That mind, animal mind. And of course, the instinct, the fish, that are on the control of Judas. Because that nefesh acts through the senses, through the muscles, through the sires. We have to transform that. We have to comprehend that and to put all of those atomic forces of nefesh under the service of the innermost. Our mind, the thinking mind, has to be under the service of nus. How to pass of a transformation. And of course, we had to kill the egos in order to acquire that. Because remember that part of Nesha Ma is the essence that learns from Nus. What is the cause of stuttering, egos or karma? Stutter. Can't speak. Stutter. Well, uh, it's when you use the word in the wrong way. And remember that symbolically, every body is a stutter. Right? Jesus made to speak those that cannot speak, those that cannot hear. You cannot understand this lecture. You do not understand the meaning of this. Well, your Philip is really dead in the thyroid thyro gland, thyroid, right? You need to put in activity Philip because he understands what is written in the scriptures. And you need to awake Bartholomew, but don't skin alive people. Because that's bad. Know how to use those powers together. And then you will see, because everybody is blind, spiritually speaking. Everybody, everybody is mute. Right? Or stutter. Scarcely can talk. You want to communicate this knowledge, but you are a stutter. Well, work a lot with the letter E. e. That awakes Philip a little bit. Completely only with chastity. Another question. The temple of Alden is a temple of medicine located in the astral plane. There, the masters of medicine help anybody who is sick, physically or internally. 
how can they, if it's karma, oh, we, can they supersede karma? No, no, no. Uh, that's precisely, it's a good question. Because sometimes, I mean, in Gnosticism, we have a lot of magical work in which you can invoke the angels, the masters of medicine, in order to heal you, to heal your vital body, your astral body, your mental body. But the master always work if it's not karmic. Many times we ask for the healing of this person because we are even ask for healing to the ex-person there in, in other parts of the world that is not even a Gnostic. But for compassion, we ask for him because he's a relative. Heal this person, please. But if that is kar Kamaduro, Karma Zaya, you can ask a thousand times and the person cannot be healed because the masters obey the law. They arrive to the place where the sick person is and then the laws of karma are there. Mm -hmm. You cannot work here. This. And they leave. But they always go. If that sickness is curable, and then they will perform their and put their spiritual medicine in the vital body in order to heal the physical body. If it's related with the astral body, they will place there. And eventually we will be healed. But we have to study psychology, Kabbalah, alchemy, in order not to keep doing the or to causing the same effect. Because if we are sick, it's because we are stupid. That's the right answer. So we had to wake wisdom, intelligence, in the path. Yep. One person is asking that they've heard that the Temple of Alden is in the astral plane in Germany. And they've also heard by others that Alden is the heart temple of Mercury, which is correct. Yeah, well, uh, is, is, Mercury is because the Archangel Raphael is the angel of medicine, of science. And uh, is a temple where all the masters, Paracelsus, Galenus, Hippocrates, the angel of the night, many other great doctors are there that are helping this humanity in this day and age. Now, if the temple is in Germany, I really don't know. I never investigated that. The only thing that I want when I to be healed is to go there. And the innermost will always take you there. You go on the astral plane consciously and you say, my father, my God, please take me to the Temple of Alden. And he will take you to the Temple of Alden because the innermost know. Well, if you want to know the address, then you can go and ask. But if you are sick, why do you want to ask that? It, it might be. I really, I really don't know. Never inquire where the Temple of Alden is. But are these related with Mercury? Yes. Is Dharma involved in also? You can negotiate? Like negotiate what? Dharma? If you have Dharma. Can you negotiate that for an illness? Oh, yeah, of or... course. Of course. The master also explained. You want to be healed? Heal others. Work for others. Because anything that you ask, you have to pay. This is the law. Nothing is given by, for free. Right? And then you have to, that's why one of the third factors of the revolution of the consciousness is sacrifice for humanity. Because by giving is how we pay what we owe. That's why people that are sacrificing themselves years and years and years in this knowledge, they said, but I am still in the same level and I don't receive it, I don't see. Well, because you are paying, hello, what you owe. You, are, you, you don't deserve. It's what the Master Jesus there at the end. When you reach and approach the level of self life, you said, oh, well, I deserve this. No, no, no. You did what you should have done. This is it. What you have done is what you did. You don't deserve any praises. Everybody has to self-realize here. You want to return into the absolute as a conqueror. Your Glorian wants to awake all the infinite possibilities. Now, Samael, Michael, Raphael, Zahariel, and all of those archangels, cosmo creators, already did it. And they want to help us. That's why they give us the innermost in order for us to work and to develop our Glorian. And we return to the, into the absolute as a self-realized master. And then the Insof will say, well, now you need to appear into the next Maha Mambantara and to help others as you were helped. Because this is the law. And if you succeed, probably you will enter into the 13th Eon and to rest. 
Jesus did it. He entered into the 13th year. Most of the masses that are self-realized, they entered the 12th, which is the insof. Only Jesus entered into the 13th, and he renounced for compassion. So he's a paramartha satya. He doesn't need to be here in this, in this earth. He doesn't need it. But he's here for compassion. But humanity didn't understand his mission. He thinks that he died or the, the, he was killed 2,000 years ago. And everybody, if he believes that, is saved. And what about the development? What about our glory end? You think that the glory end will develop all of that just by believing? If you have a woman and it says, Okay, wife, sit there and believe that you are going to be pregnant. And say, well, what do you mean? If you believe in that, you will be pregnant. No, 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 no. Yosef has to act with Mary, but in the chaste way. That's why it's hidden. Another question, because I am going out of the topic a little bit. Yeah. You, you said that there was an apostle that always doubts. Which one was that? Uh, Thomas. Yeah. How is that different from the skepticism and doubt you're talking about? Well, it's not that Thomas is a skeptical. Thomas wants to be sure that what he is, because he's in the right part of the brain, related with experiences, intuition, in internal planes, polyvoyance, superlative intuition. An image appears there, and it says, I am a master. And Thomas says, oh yeah, I will prove that. If this image is not projected by the mind of this mythomaniac down there, oh, really is the Glorian that is reaching self-realization. Let me put and let me prove that, said Thomas. And then we see that is something queer there. Say, ah, you are an image, a projection. It is written, you shall not make any image of God. Meanwhile, you, mind, is creating something here, which is ominous. Look like Jesus, but it's not Jesus. You are not a master. You are a mythomaniac. So only Thomas can say, ah, this is, or is not. You see? Because a lot of things, you're in the path, you, you internally, you receive, oh yeah, you reach already the mastery, you reach all this level, you are in this and then, and, and your own egos can, can cheat you, betray you, and you can fall into mistakes. It's what is happening in the Gnostic movement as well. Because everybody that enters into this Gnostic movement enters with ego. And if you are not aware, the ego can cheat you and tell you, you are the master, this and that, and you return. And when you analyze things, Thomas analyzed things, and other people say, oh, you are not that. Right? So Thomas doesn't buy things very easily. Thomas is the last word. He proves the truth. That's why we need Thomas. One person is asking, related to Thomas, if Thomas is related to direct experience, why did Jesus tell Thomas it is better to believe without seeing? Well, better to believe without seeing because in the beginning, in the beginning, we started blind. Everybody enters as blind. Here you are listening to all of this. Can you prove it? Can your Thomas prove it? Your Thomas is not active. So Jesus says, well, it's better to believe before you develop your own Thomas. But Thomas is a great apostle because in the end, if you read Pistisophia also, you will see how Thomas gives also explanation about things because Thomas is really cognition, a vivid experience. But before that, we have the right and the duty of believing without seeing it. Because all what I said in this lecture is from the Master Samael on Veor and the Master Adonai. They taught me, Master Samael, the Master Adonai. If you read the three mountains, you will find how the Master Samael says, My great friend, the angel Adonai. Well, all of these physical aspects of the glands are from the Master Adonai. It's not mine. I'm learning from him and experiencing. And of course, I know. A Master Adonai is a master. He's an angel. And uh, many of those things 
I experience already and have faith. My Thomas is sure. But you, your Thomas, I don't know your Thomas. Because everyone has his own particular Thomas. Another question. So we can awaken the apostles with mantras and transmutation? To awake the 12 apostles is a self-realization of the being. In the book of Revelation, you find that Jerusalem, the celestial Jerusalem that descends from God, has 12 doors. Those are related with the 12 apostles. Self-realization is to the complete development of Jesus and his 12 apostles, which are related with the sun and the 12 planets. All the cosmic forces in harmony in the glory. And obviously, we had to, but we had to start in the physical plane. How to, to know how the apostles are related with the glands in order for us to work wisely. Because I was, for instance, studying uh, the appendix. And many doctors here, according to evolution, they said appendix is nothing. You can operate and take it out. Like it's just a piece of flesh there hanging from the intestines. No, no. Everything has a right to be there in the body. This is the grand sympathetic nervous system. Can you give examples of physical ailments related to ENS Astrale? <clears throat> well, uh, for instance, let's talk about uh, James the Elder, which is, uh, you uh, study the, uh, his letter in the New Testament, in the Bible, says that you have to control your tongue. Because people use their tongue in the wrong way from, from this center, from the pit of the stomach. And uh, the person that act and use that force in the wrong way, uh, they originate in the astral, in the astral level, uh, poisons, egos that transform that energy in the wrong way and causes different illnesses in, the, in that area of the stomach, ulcers, like anger, for instance. If you talk always with anger, the liver is, 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 is a problem in the stomach as well with an ulcer. Many type of diseases in this day and age is because the astral light in that part of the area of the body is poisoned with bad substances that we eat. There's, for instance, uh, problems or sicknesses of the brain are related when you put in your system. And that is related, for instance, with uh, Simon the Zealot. You know what it is uh, to be a zealot, right? It's to be jealous, right, of only the things of God. But there are people that think, Oh, smoke marijuana is good. Take a uh, 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 mushroom, it's good too. Take this, this drug, whatever, and to awake. Hmm? So you put it in your system in order to awake the subconscious, unconscious. Simon the Zealot will, will not admit you to go into the superior worlds and to experience the superior worlds. It will send you to hell. Then you are, of course, with sickness in the brain because of cocaine, because of many drugs. And if you study, I repeat, every function of every apostle in relation with every organ, you will find how the astral light is transformed into a poison because of our bad activity. Remember that in the astral light is the battle between the black and the white magicians, Kundabafer and Kundalini. And unfortunately, we have a lot of Kunda buffer, poison sulfur, poison force, transforming the wrong way. That is in relation with the transformation of impressions. That's why the inner most doesn't do his self-realization through the mind. Esau is rejected, but Jacob is taken in his 12 children. Now you can uh, see the meaning there also. Have any other question? In occult medicine and practical magic, there are a lot of formulas to protect or undo black magic. 
What are some easy formulas to undo black magic? A lot of the plants are hard to find. Yeah, that's precisely one of the problems. Because most of the powerful that I ever practice in order to reject black magic or every evil work, because in the past I experienced when you awake, you see many uh, evil entities that do evil because of a game, because they enjoy doing it. They don't even hate you. They just want to see if you, what you talk, you know. And I, I have many, many times people that hurt me in that way, and I defend my, myself always with a lemon tree. The lemon tree is the best. I don't know if you know how to work with the lemon tree. But uh, since it's very complicated, uh, we are going to put that in the website. The work with the lemon tree in order to kill any type of black magic is the best. Of course, there are others that the master talks. But that lemon tree is related with that book that the master wrote called uh, Major Mysteries. And that is written there, but it's not published there. But we can publish there in order for you uh, to learn how to defend yourself. Maguey, of course, the aloe vera, those elementals are very strong. And there are many that the master explains in the book of uh, medicine and practical magic in order to defend yourself. And, uh, well, if you live uh, in Canada, you have to have your green uh, house and whatever, but you have to to know how to handle because there are many tropical plants that cannot survive in cold weather. What's the prayer, like the Fons Alpha prayer? Well, that, like that, that prayer, Fons Alpha et Omega, helps. And only to reject any negative force. But you have to do it every day or until you know because that mantra shows what is the problem or what is the negative energy that is coming. And when you discover that, and then you work with other, other works in a spiritual way, in order to defend yourself. It reveals. Reveals. Reveals to you the source of the evil thing. How exactly? How exactly? Because uh, 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 physically or in your experiences, you see. You only are the one, because you are the one that pronounces the mantra. You are the only one that can see from where that evil vibration is coming. Sometimes that is willingly do it, doing it. Sometimes it is unwillingly. Because there are many egos inside of people related with witchcraft, with sorcery. And those egos sometimes work independently. And sometimes the person that owns that ego doesn't know it. That's why I said, use your Bartholomew in the right way. Sometimes, if you accuse somebody because you see something internally, you have to be sure that the person is conscious of what his ego is doing or her ego is doing. Otherwise, we fall into cruelty. So what's the difference between that and the plan? Like, what's the difference between saying the prayer and practicing with a plan? Well, you are just rejecting. With the prayer, you are rejecting the force and trying to see and only not to, to be hurt. The plant is protection as well, but also you can use it in order to heal if the physical body is already hurt. You can heal your physical body as well. You have another question. I advise you to study the book of medicine, the Igneous Rose. Those are the two books that really the Master teaches. And of course, to meditate a lot and to hear this lecture Many times, in order to comprehend your own self, your physical nature. What do you study? Can you really study a cold medicine book? Yeah. You memorize every prayer? Memorize, you memorize study? Meditate. Meditating. Meditate. Well, if you remember a real magician, a real initiate, memorize the conjuration of the seven, the conjuration of the four, the invocation of Solomon, the exorcism of the air, water, earth, and fire, memory. The conjuration of Fons Alpha by memory. Because if you are in the astral plane and you are in danger, where is the book of medicine? Where is your, you have to know it. 
have to be in your mind. Otherwise, the magician will look at you, a demon is attacking you, and you said, in the name of, and he will say, ah, you don't even remember, you know? Oh, where is my book? Where am I? I have to return to the physical plane to read it and to return to astral plane and to conjure you. And then the black magician will say, oh, yeah, do it. Meanwhile, we'll kick you. <laughs> you had to know things by memory. All right, fine. But well, what's the difference between asking your being for help when you are being attacked? Oh, well, in that case, if you forget because of fear something that you know by memory, because sometimes in the internal planes, I want to conjure somebody, and then my, my own ego is acting against me. And I feel like startled. Oh, and then and it says, oh, it's now my ego. It might be part of me that is hurting me. My father, my God, please, our father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then all the force come from the inner mosque and reject that negative thing that some, most of the time are your own egos that you are seeing. The secret enemy is within and without, but more within than without. And uh, now you can uh, comprehend why we put a lot of images there in the website, because it helps to visualize what we're talking in order to understand. But you can, I repeat, you can listen to this lecture many times until you understand. And if you do not understand, don't worry, because I don't also. This is it. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,